Hello my friends and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to our Planet Zoo series and our Highland Park series. Um, well Highland Park, it's Highland Zoo. I always say park, I always get the confusion with Planko and Planet Zoo every single bloody episode. Do apologise for that my friends. Uh, if you didn't see last episode, you'll see the link above right now. Feel free to go click that, go get caught up and then crack on with today's episode. Uh, before we get started, I know the time lapse has already started, but before we get started, I do just want to apologise for this sexy sexy voice um my wife's not been very well she's had a cold i thought that i'd got away with it because she's been ill for quite some time and i thought i'd got away with it i'm not going to get that woke up this morning and i got a throat like razor blades so yeah it's not fun especially when you've got to sit and talk about you know your zoo and your series and things but we're going to fight through it. I'm not going to be one of those guys that gets knocked down by man flu. Um, we're just going to power through. Uh, but my friends, you will see on screen, the time lapse has begun today. And um, I asked you guys last episode to get your suggestions in to what animals you wanted to see. And there were two very, very popular suggestions. Uh, the first was the red panda. And the second, and the one we've gone with, was the pygmy hippo. And I've got to be honest, I'm so glad that you guys suggested uh, this animal because it's let me think about enclosures a little bit differently because they are slightly bigger, but they are an amazing looking animal. The animations, the lot in the game, they are unbelievable looking. And uh, I think that when you see the enclosure at the end in its finished state, uh, you're going to be blown away. I think it's one of the best looking habitats we've done. Uh, this is essentially, and I do have to put this out there, part one of the pygmy hippos though. And when we get to the low section, I am going to explain more. But um, basically, part of this is unfinished and it's unfinished on purpose because I have ideas of building an educational centre next to the pygmy hippo habitat and um, I want to do either an over the over uh, overlooking uh, viewing uh, platform or an underwater one I want to work it into the educational centre though so obviously I've just kind of put um, just a wooden fence up uh, to the right hand side if you're looking from the one viewing platform that we build in today's episode um, so it so, so that side looks slightly unfinished and um, I didn't get around to doing the waterfall either but we're going to do all that in next episode um, I'm going to let you uh, you know enjoy all of it next time out you will see uh, at the moment my friends in the time lapse part we're actually building the hard shelter for the hippos um, and um, this is essentially where they would come and be locked in during the night but also if the animals ever needed separating um, this is kind of sort of um, how you do your animal management with the uh, zookeepers you know if you're new to the series we're trying to go with a realistic zoo uh, not high not you know ultra hyper realistic um, hyper realism at this point for me is a little difficult um, because I'm still getting used to the you know the way the game works um but my next series that i do i have decided i'm going to do a hyper realism uh zoo and it's going to be very modern looking this zoo that we're building at the moment uh has a very natural look about it a lot of foliage a lot of rock uh, a lot of you know trees that sort of stuff and it's because we are basing this loosely on a country park that is very close to where i live so uh, it's one of the reasons why um we're using that and we're using a lot of stuff as inspiration uh in the zoo this is um, this ends up looking really nice. This building is a very basic shape. Um, I, you know, I said to people when I first started the zoo, try to get away from using squares and all that sort of stuff. Try and use some interesting uh, roofs and things. Uh, most of the hard shelters I've built are squares and rectangles. So God knows what I was talking about, but I've still managed to make them look really, really nice. I've got this vision though that the educational centre is going to be a circle, but we're going to do an inverted semicircle at the bottom for the viewing platform. So the top will overhang i just i've got this idea of the educational center but i need to go away and i need to kind of um, mess around with a game basically and uh, see if i can make it happen um and it's going to look nice where i place it but uh, yeah we've just gone with a very basic sort of square building it houses the um you know the staff quarters next to it where the food and stuff would be prepared and then in this part that i'm building at the moment is the hard shelter where the hippos come to sleep and um yeah, it get, ends up looking really, really nice, ladies and gents. Um, now, uh, a couple of things I want to get into today's episode are slightly, you know, off, off subject of the build and just questions and things that I've been asked. Now, I do just want to say a massive thank you to anybody that leaves a comment. Um, you guys are very, very active on the channel in the comment section, and I love that. Um, you know, for those that don't know, this is my second channel. Uh, my other channel is a football channel, and 
I don't really get a lot of interaction over there. Um, we get a fair amount of sort of predictions for the Premier League show and things like that, but no one really asks me any questions because of the subject matter. But with this, because obviously we're building stuff and people see me do things and then they think, do you know what, I wonder how he did that. And I get asked, you know, for a lot of tips and tricks. And um, I'm probably not the best. I really, I was thinking to myself, maybe I should do a tutorial series. Maybe that would, uh, you know, help. But I'm not a master builder. You know, I'm not a Silverette. I'm not a Rudy. I'm not a the lady designer. I'm getting there, but I'm not really on their level just yet. You know, like I've just watched the latest um, Koala Zoo episode, which is... Um a collaborative effort between um, Silverette, the lady designer, Rudy and uh, Mike Sheets. And Mike Sheets' latest episode uh, is unbelievable. He reworked a few bits of, you know, the other guy's stuff and he did a flamingo enclosure. But the work that he did on the educational centre is next level. And it's one of the reasons why I was thinking, you know, what, we could do with something like that in our zoo because we are going for a realistic, uh, you know, look in the zoo. And uh, an educational centre would be really, really important. So it's one of the reasons why I'm doing it but the just level of work and the what they're achieving it, with the game mechanics is just on another level and it blows me away and it's mass inspiration and I hope that I kind of inspire you guys as well but we get back to the point that I was making because I've gone way off topic and that is that we're very active in the comments but a lot of people have been asking me you know how do you do it how do you create this you know stuff like the latest comment one of the latest comments I had was how did you create this beautiful building I ain't got a clue where to start I've just bought the game um, now I haven't obviously got any tutorial stuff um, but the one thing that I do when it comes to building you know enclosures and buildings and restaurants is that I go on Google and I simply put in pygmy hippo enclosure and i see what sort of enclosure zoos are using and then i then t take that information and i try to just make my own version of what they're doing and i do that very much with everything i've also as well you know pull up blueprints i pull up plans of other zoos to make sure that our pathing works the way a zoo should work um I think that the best thing to do is just go and get inspiration from what zoos are actually doing in real life. And then that way you'll get to a point where things look and feel the way they potentially should. The other thing as well is that obviously it's all well and good getting the inspiration, but then you don't really know what to do if you don't understand the building mechanics. Now, where that's concerned, I was quite lucky because I'd played Planet... Um, uh, coaster and so I was used to the way that you know Planko worked and Planet Zoo essentially works in exactly the same fashion um, I actually think that Planet Zoo's uh, you know the, the the pieces that they've got are actually a bit nicer than that of Planko um, and, and so you can make stuff look really really you know nice and especially where the realism is concerned because of the lighting and stuff um, but because I was aware of how that worked, it was a very easy thing for me. But if you're brand new and you don't understand, it can be very, very intimidating, uh, the mechanics where the game are concerned. Now, the one person who I found who does the best tutorials on YouTube, if you're getting a bit stuck, is Geekism. Um, he does sort of, you know, he, he does games for adults, essentially, is what his, uh, his, cha his channel is based around. But his Planet Zoo stuff is fantastic. He's another guy who's building and doing some excellent stuff where the game is concerned. But he's done a few tutorial things he's done, you know, how to build, how to do pathing, how to do this sort of stuff. So if you are new, you are getting a bit stuck, not really sure where to start, you don't know how the game mechanics work, head over to Geekism, check him out. You know, I would say that I'm probably, you know, a bit of a pro where the mechanics are concerned now because I, I use it all the time. But if you're not and you need the help, that's a guy I would suggest um, for really fantastic tutorial videos and you can't go wrong. And then hopefully... You'll get to the point where you can do that and you can start creating, you know, things like I'm creating now in your zoos. But it is always nice to get comments where people are saying, you know, wow, that's fantastic. How did you make that? That looks amazing. I absolutely love that. Um, but, you know, if you are getting a bit stuck and you're getting a bit frustrated with the game, there is help out there. You just need to know where to look. And hopefully I've given you a couple of great suggestions there, my friends, to help you along the way. Uh, but if we get back into the time uh, lapse of today's episode, you will see uh, we're just placing the roof now on the top of the hippo enclosure. Um, while I'm watching this, I have realised there's a couple of things I need to do. I need to put some lights on the top of the enclosure for the hippos. Um, 
<coughs> enclosures do add things like that and I just have completely forgot. Uh, you're going to see as well when we get to the live section I talk about uh, slightly rejigging the inside of the uh, hippo enclosure as well uh, because what you're going to see me do now is that we're building a backlot paddock and uh, I'm doing this because we were a lot of zoos and especially with a lot of animals of this sort of size they need to be separated from time to time. Uh, you know, if a juvenile has come into the zoo or if a brand new animal has come and they're introducing them to the animals that are already there, they usually use a backlot paddock with the vents and they interact that way or sometimes the animals need to be separated if they've been fighting and things like that and they do this a lot and especially with the you know the bigger animals like the pygmy hippo for instance and so i thought because we're going with this realistic look we'll take a look and we'll build like a little backlot paddock now the paddock you see is not the paddock you're gonna see in the live section though uh i do make this a little bit bigger and we do put a pond in the back as well because I thought to myself, if uh, a pygmy hippo had to step, uh, spend an extended amount of time in this area, he would need some water because they do spend a lot of time in the water. So um, it is slightly different when you get to the live section of today's episode, uh, but essentially that's what we are doing here. And we're putting in uh, a lovely little gate. Um, I'm trying to keep it all, you know, uh, u universal, trying to keep it all looking the same. Um, I have a little OCD about me, so I, li <laughs> I like things to all match, basically. And uh, I think that the idea we came up with where this was concerned actually worked out really, really well. The fence would slide. And so what I did is I used this gutter in and I put that on the side. And so when the zookeeper comes over, he would uh, unlock the gate and then he would use it and slide it across rather than it being a gate that opens up um, and also we need this area because if the animals were ever sick needed to go to the vets they're a big animal uh, zookeepers are not going to be carrying these guys to the vets they would obviously need to bring in uh, a small truck or something with a trailer they'd get loaded up in that and then they'd be get driven off and that same would be said if an animal was to ever leave the zoo or a new animal was to come in um, this area here is going to be the start of uh, you know another backlot area we are going to try to uh, continue the backlot area with the zoo where the zookeepers are able to walk all the way around the zoo and when it comes to the big animals they're able to get in and get the animals out should they ever be sick new animals arrive etc etc uh, what I've just said so because of the element of realism we have to think about these things uh, when building the zoo and um, you know and someone else as well said to me that when I'm doing episodes I always refer to the builds as we and not I um, the reason for that is we are building this together guys you might not be physically jumping in the game and creating the stuff that I am but um you are the guys that are leaving me the suggestions. You are the people that are basically saying whether or not you like something or you don't. And you guys are the ones that are saying maybe you should make this, you know, small change here. Um, I love that. I love the fact that you guys get involved. I love the fact that you guys are helping me evolve the zoo as we go along as well. That's why I always refer to the build as we. I hope that clears it up because a few people actually, you know, brought that up with me. They were like, you build the zoo on your own. Stop referring to it as we. It's very strange. But no, we, this is a collaborative effort. You're just not doing the building i am but you know you guys are coming up with the ideas at the end of the day uh what you're going to see now in the time lapse is this is where we start to build the viewing area um for the pygmy hippos now um we've got one viewing area put in as i've already said earlier on in the episode we're going to be building an educational center that's going to have the secondary viewing uh, area but we do a very basic viewing area but um what i've done this time is i've made a custom floor uh, so basically i can see the edge of where i want the viewing area to begin um and so for people that don't want to stop and look at the pygmy hippos they can just walk straight by on the ordinary path that's why we've used it slightly wider something i've noticed in the zoo uh, to this point when i've got people in it is that there's certain areas where people get stuck and uh, there's the, the path basically isn't wide enough they can't walk around people that are looking at animals and things like that and so i thought to myself i really need to come up with another idea because i can imagine the pygmy hippos being a very very popular addition to the zoo um so yeah that's essentially what we're doing here we're staying with a very much African theme because the pygmy hippos are from Africa. Um, the majority of their population in the wild are found in uh, the Ivory Coast, I was reading. There's not many of these beautiful creatures left in the wild, about 3,000 actually to be exact. And that's why there's a lot of zoos now getting heavily involved in conservation efforts. London Zoo has a massive pygmy hippo conservation effort uh, that they're partaking in. They've uh, recently built the pygmy hippos a new habitat. Um, it's a fantastic looking thing. There's three different viewing platforms 
platforms and areas that you can actually see the animals there uh, and the keepers have a, 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 a 360 degree uh, uh, ability to look at the animals it's really really cool and uh, they're really really concentrating London Zoo on bringing these animals back from the brink which I absolutely love to hear so yeah we're staying with a very much African theme because that's where the animals are found found in very much tropical environments they actually uh, have they've actually got webbed uh, you know feet which uh, they're uh, a lot larger common hippo uh, doesn't have and the reason they have this is because they have to be able to trudge through the mud in the forests and stuff and that actually helps uh, and they spend actually uh, they spend a lot more time out of water um, than their um, cousin the common hippo as well the common hippo spends a lot of time in water it just comes out to graze uh, of a night but uh, these guys uh, spend a lot of time actually foraging uh, through the rainforest and looking for new uh, you know watering holes and things like that so it's really interesting to do a little bit of reading on these guys um you know I, I knew a little bit about them but i really didn't realize how bad the plight was in the wild it really is sad um you know a lot of them have been forced out because of deforestation uh you will see there in the time lapse that that viewing area slightly changed um yeah i just, oh, just weren't happy with it originally but yeah their plight because of deforestation um it's very sad they've been forced out because obviously you know people have been you know knocking the rainforest down for you know natural resources and things it's not nice it's very hard as well apparently from what i was reading to protect the areas that they're from because a lot of the countries that they're found in uh there's just been civil war and a lot of stuff that's going on they've been killed as a result of that but it's hard to protect areas like that when they're in a war-torn country uh you can't get in and you can't put the jurisdiction down it's really unfortunate for the animal but it's nice to see zoos especially zoos like london zoo which is one of my favorites doing such an amazing job to try and protect uh the animal uh for us and for the next generation to really enjoy it whether that be you know in a zoo or in the wild obviously we would love every animal to still be out there in the wild for us to see uh but it's just not the case unfortunately in the world that we live in but um you know there are people in this world that are trying to save things like this and uh you know the more we support these people the the the, the greater um the greater uh, you know ability we'll have to save every single species that is uh, you know s suffering at the moment um you're gonna see it we're just re just working in the uh fence now as well uh for the habitat this is going to be the way that the uh, you know the keepers get in um the back lot area this is what i was saying about the road this is where the truck would pull up and uh, we're going to do a, a lot of this uh, over here we're going to do like another little uh sort of mini hub and it's going to obviously because we've got the hippos and we've got the flamingos and they're all very 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 close we really need to be able to do that ladies and gents um at this point we've still got a hell of a lot of time to go in the live section uh, sorry in the speed build section of today's episode but i think i'm going to leave you with it i think i'm going to just let you enjoy the rest of the build because obviously i need to preserve my throat for the live section of today's episode and uh, you know that's going to be quite long anyway uh, so my friends for now enjoy the rest of the speed build i hope you're happy with what i achieve and i'll see you real real soon for the live section of today's episode
And so my friends, here we are. Welcome to the live section of today's episode. Uh, once again, apologies for my throat. Um, yeah, it just went overnight. I built this yesterday and it, um, yeah, it's just gone overnight. I got a bit of a cold. My wife's not been very well, so um, I've obviously caught that off of her. But um, yes, this is the build. This is how it's looking. Uh, as I said in the um, time-lapse part of today's build, this is um, some of this is temporary. This is essentially part one of the uh, Pygmy Hippos because there's still little bits and bobs that I still want to do. And, um, you know, I've got ideas of doing an educational center over here. And I kind of want the edu educational center to have like a viewing platform in it, whether or not it's going to be... a uh, you know, one overlooking it, or if we're going to do an underwater one, I'm really not sure yet. I've got to really try and work out the logistics of um, of the educational centre. But um, yeah, this is it, and I really, really, really like it. I'm so glad that you guys uh, suggested the pygmy hippo. Uh, as I said in the um, in the time lapse part of today's video. It was between these and the pandas, and I had more of an idea of what I wanted to do with the hippos, so they won, and uh, they've actually helped me start to map the sort of African area of the zoo as well. Um, so it's actually really, really helped me, and uh, you kind of, you help, you guys helped me at a time where I was really running out of ideas, but um, yeah, as you can see, this is gonna be a little viewing area. This is the only viewing area we've got to this point. Um, so they're gonna, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be putting a like, uh, a cover on this. I might not, I might just leave it as it is. Uh, but if you like, flip the switch. Obviously, we're trying to stay as realistic as possible. I think that what I'm gonna do is use this as a blueprint uh, for an ultra realistic zoo which will be the next uh, you know sandbox mode that we do it, it's not going to be coming for some time we're not very far into this build uh, we still got lots of uh, you know to go and I'm not going to rush it I want to take my time with it uh, but yeah this is like the first viewing area in a lot of zoos you get the one fence and then the secondary fence I put this little concrete bit here um, the reason why as I said in the time lapse that we've done uh, you know the pond the way we have is uh, that these things especially where hippos are concerned um, they crap in the water and so you need to be able to drain the water out of the pond and be able to scrub it clean uh, to make sure of you know no infections and things like that so uh, that's the reason why we built it the way we have um, there is going to be a waterfall over here um, and uh, I didn't say it in the time lapse but this is a little tip that I picked up from Mike Sheets now um, my other waterfall that I did near the Garials I wasn't happy with the way that the water has to go up and over, uh, just punched the microphone, yeah, it goes up and over basically, and I had to use the effects to do that, and Mike basically had done a video for someone, he does this um, ep ep this series called uh, Garden Rescue, and he puts the glass panel in here, and it essentially helps you get the water right up to the edge, so what we'll be able to do is rock all this up, and then when we put the effects in, it will look as though the effects are coming right from uh, the edge of the water, and I really love that idea, uh, so we've done that, there will be a waterfall there, um, and then yeah, uh, we've got over here, we've got the big concrete pond, and then my idea where the educational center is, is that this part here, essentially, uh, will be glass maybe. Uh, we'll, we'll drop it right down so you'll be able to see under the water. So essentially it'll be on the edge of this concrete lip. And you'll be able to see under the water, you'll be able to see the uh, hippos using their pool, and uh, I think that'll be, you know, I think that'll be a really good thing to do for the educational center. Obviously we're gonna need to hide all the backstage lot with the educational center. So I'm going to probably build some sort of custom wall here. But as far as their little uh, house is concerned, I really love the way it come out. I had this idea of doing a bit of a, you know, a very basic shape building, but wanted to give it a little character. And uh, I think we've really achieved that, especially with this door um, and the way that that works. And then you come inside and we've got it all fenced off. We've got the new power board where we can, you know, work all the doors from. And um, essentially, really what I should do is put another sort of fence in here so that when they are you know separated if they ever need to be we've got the paddock outside um for them to use this wasn't in the time lapse uh this little pool here but this is something else that i've put in i kind of thought to myself if one of them has to be closed out the back then we really need to uh they really need some water to be able to use. So I built like a little pond at the back as well. Uh, and basically they would be separated in times of like, you know, if there's a new baby or, um, you know, they really need to control the two animals for, for whatever reason. Or if they're doing cleaning as well, they can separate the two to make sure they get fed, uh, you know, the correct ways and this sort of stuff. But also I thought this was a great way to sort of um, really work in the back lot 
area uh, once again. So, you know, if they ever needed to go to the vets or there was ever a problem or we were, you know, uh, sending them away to another zoo and that sort of thing, uh, it's very easy now for a... Um, for a, a truck to come in and collect the animals because they're a lot bigger and it and it joins up with our back lot area over here the main hub and uh, you know if you're wondering how we're going to hide this from the rest of the zoo this path when it eventually works its way round we're going to tunnel underneath so we're going to have a bridge at the top and then we're going to tunnel underneath and it is all going to remain hidden the back lot is all going to remain hidden uh, and a lot of zoos achieve that with you know walls fences and foliage and obviously this zoo is very heavy on the foliage and we're going to continue to do that and uh, you know we're going for a very naturalistic looking zoo uh, for this one and uh, but when we get to the next one um, we will uh, when we get to the next zoo when we do the height you know the, the ultra realistic hyper realistic zoo it's going to be very very new and very clean looking and uh, I, I need to share this with you but we've literally the baby's just been born um, and I love the fact it was out in the back lot area because that would be the case. They would be separated. But this is amazing. We now have a little baby pygmy hippo. I can really understand why you guys wanted these. They've got a lot of character. They look really cool. Um, I love, absolutely love it. And the reason why as well that the enclosure is so big is that I want to have quite a few of them. I don't just want the three. I want there to be quite a few in here. This is, this is overkill. This could be half the size and still be enough room uh, for the pygmy hippos. But we are a conservation zoo. Obviously, we're going to have a breeding program. So I wanted it to be big. And I wanted this education centre that I'm thinking about to you know be on the side as well. Um, so that is the pygmy hippos. Now, before we leave... I need to share some other bits with you, uh, ladies and gents, because I've been really, really busy. And I'm going to pause it while I do this, because um, it gets a bit much. There's a lot going on in the zoo. You will see there's no guests at the moment as well. I've emptied the zoo out, because um, why I work, I don't like the people about. Um, I don't know why, but it just, it really distracts me. So... I've been doing a lot of rock work, a lot of foliage. This is the generic stuff that we we're always going to do. Uh, I've started to like really finish off the waterfall. Uh, I think it's starting to look really nice. This is a this is like that secondary fence we've been using. Now this little area I really like. This is like a little pit stop area where you can just you know throw down, sit down, get yourself sorted out. But we've got this wonderful map uh, so you can see where you want to go next in the zoo. Security camera, a little bin there. I think that looks really really nice. Um, I've reworked that basically from an old idea that we had very early on. Um, the uh, gorilla enclosure is now really fully complete. We've really closed this off. We've started putting fences in. We've got this new path, which does obviously need to be worked, uh, reworked, because my thinking was that if the gorillas ever needed to go off the zoo, there's no way of us to get in them out. But this is a way. But uh, I'm not being funny. You're not going to be able to carry a mal, um gorilla up these stairs he's going to be a heavy git so we're going to have to put find a way of you know really bringing in a bit of road that potentially goes up there uh, that they could stick him on the back of a cart and that sort of thing so I've, I've really got to work this area this all needs finishing off it's going to be something that i do in my spare time this needs reworking as well i need to like really house these buildings um but that's other stuff that I've been doing. Um, I've obviously been doing a little bit of work over here as well uh, because I've had to rework this path to get this road in. Uh, but I've started detailing as well. Like I've started doing things like this, you know, like putting bags and sacks where like food and stuff might be left out that needs to be put in the warehouse. Uh, I've started doing that with a lot of the backlot areas. I've really started thinking about the backlot areas once again as well because we are going for a realistic looking zoo. And then the other thing that I've done, um, which I was going to put in the time lapse, but because of time lapse, and this episode's been so long, I decided against it. Uh, but we've put this lovely pond in, uh, because I was really wondering what I should do over here. So I put this lovely pond in, and then you'll see the fence goes all the way around. Um, and then I've used this as a habitat. And we've actually put the Indian peafowls in here. Now, in a lot of European zoos, and especially in zoos in England, the peafowls just roam free in the zoos. Um, you can't do that on Planet Zoo, unfortunately. So I thought, uh, what's, the, what's the way we could get around this? And I just thought we just use a big green we won't put any information boards up we'll hide all of their food and things like that we'll put a door in the back here i'm going to put another tree in to hide that door and it will look as if they're roaming free and what i'm going to do is when we've got other little like bits of like a green area i'm going to throw more peafowls in there and then as you go around the zoo it will just look like the peafowl peafowls uh you know run uh, free in the zoo and uh, yeah we've got a lovely little uh, a lovely little colony of them at the moment and uh, yeah I'm thinking about putting them over here uh, because this is a lovely little area we could probably put a few in there uh, and they'll really enjoy it and the good thing about the peafowl as well is 
the foliage you can really get away with a lot they don't you know react to a lot of foliage it doesn't bring their welfare down they do require a hard shelter but i haven't got a hard shelter for these guys and you'll see that their welfare is still at 81 percent so um you know i'd like to get that a little higher i might put a little you know a little shelter in this here we could probably turn into a shelter if i was to you know rework it um you know i could probably just have the door open rework it and put some bedding in there and that'd work as a hard shelter uh, but yeah it works really nice i love how that looks i want to try and do a bit more stuff like this so yeah the p-files now live in here and you'll see there's there's loads of them so it's a lovely little job and uh yeah great stuff now We've got to start talking about next episode, live section of today's episode has gone on a long, long time once again. Um, but as I've said, I'm not thinking about the length of episodes anymore. Now, next episode might be Pygmy Hippo Take 2, um, because obviously there's bits and bobs I want to finish off here, uh, and I'd like to get that done before we move on. And also, I might think about doing the educational centre next episode, because I really want it in here. The thing is with it, is if I do put it here, we're not going to be able to hide it very well, and a lot of these buildings do get hit. Hidden. But the reason I want to put the educational centre here is if, um, for instance, a bunch of school kids come in or people came in to do a back lot tour, the coaches would come in here and this would be one of the roads they'd take and they'd take them up to the educational centre first. Um, so that's why I want to place this here. So I have this idea of a building that sits here and I think it will look really nice. But um, after we've done the educational centre, I guess we should work on a couple of habitats in this section here to really start finishing this off. I've got to put a paddock in here and then, yeah, and I think... If you're going to leave suggestions for these animals that are going to, you know, maybe go in over here, African animals, um, smaller African animals, um, nothing big like the lion or the elephant or giraffe, something smaller, but uh, yeah, African animals that we could essentially, we could probably put one, hab one habitat in sort of here, and then we could put one sort of in here, and I could run the path, uh, yeah, I could probably run the path this way, and then I could run the path through the centre of it, and uh, yeah, just a couple of ideas into me my friends but i am going to leave you uh, if it will let me because um I've, the zoo's getting to a point now where when i press play it doesn't always play but i am going to leave you with the pygmy hippo um enclosure why i sign out today's episode you'll see he's messing around with that food barrel pushing it in the water the pain in the bum but anyway my friends we are done and dusted for today's episode if you are new to the channel please consider hitting that subscribe button it's really appreciated by your boy uh, drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed it and hit the bell notification uh, button to never miss an episode but my friends and until next time, you make sure you stay an extra, and I'll see you real, real soon.